Typing isn't as straightforward as it sounds. You might have developed some bad habits over time, and I discovered that when I tried ortholinear keyboards for the first time. And let's not beat around the bush. I absolutely hate ortholinear keyboards. I just couldn't make good speed with it. And every time I had to switch for meetings, there was like this relearning phase. So when I got offered to try the Vicky board, well, I wasn't really enthusiastic. Now, they might never send me a keyboard again because, you know, I'm making this totally different video where I mentioned a keyboard, but it's not like a review. I mostly wanted to figure out could I improve my typing? Now, I've been touch typing my whole life. I was blessed with getting a touch typing course all the way back when I was younger and there were still typewriters in use in that class. For those people that don't know, typewriters are the mechanical things that put ink on actual physical paper and that's how I learned to touch and type. The problem is that over three decades, you start to develop habits. For example, your pinky is like less strong than the other fingers. So you start using other fingers instead of your pinky. And I wanted to figure out how bad is it really over all that time. As a result of using natural keyboards, my hands were forced into a position and that started me adjusting my typing over years. That's outside of the default touch typing scope. Prime example was the already mentioned six that should be done with your right hand and now it's done with my left. But there were other things and a quick test gave me for example that I did something weird with my feet using the middle finger instead of the pointy finger and I don't even want to talk about what I'm doing with the O and the P here. It's weird. Now I wanted to figure out how bad is it really and the problem I have there is that either I'm typing really slow but then I can see the mistakes I'm making but I'm very you know focused on it so I might not make the mistakes that I usually make and if I'm typing as I'm usually typing I'm not thinking so I don't see the mistakes because I don't think where my fingers are at I just see the mistakes when I look back at the text then it came to me the best fix and the easiest fix is to just put a camera on my keyboard so I can see my fingers moving type a couple of sentences that hit all the letters and then just take a comparison. Are my fingers moving towards the right spot? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go start typing, look at it for a couple of hours and see what I get as a result. Needing a solution, I found out the easiest fix would be to just put a camera on my fingers and see how bad it really is. So let's give that a go. So I've been spending most of the day messing around typing on the keyboard and seeing if that will bring a better result to me and there was definitely a difference because last time when i was practicing things like ortholinear keyboards i was mostly saying like okay the keys are in a weird position i'll just need to learn how to type on the weird position but now it wasn't about the keys are in a weird position it's about my typing is weird and i need to fix that and then the ortholinear keyboard actually helps because me trying to move my hands towards the left or the right or trying to cheat basically immediately gets punished because the keys are not where I expect them they are more to the left or more to the right and using the right fingers actually helps still it takes a huge hit on what I'm used to typing I normally type it like 80 words per minute and now I type 40 words per minute and it's going up a bit to 50 but I still make a lot of typos and then I have to go back and think about where to put my fingers this is something that I just need to practice over and over time and just get the mistakes out that brings me back to my original problem if I switch from an ortholinear keyboard back to a regular keyboard then all my old bad habits just return so I think that the only way that I can actually fix this is by biting the bullet and fixing myself meaning that i'll have to switch between my regular keyboard and a ortholinear keyboard then keep practicing on doing real touch typing typing with the right finger and then seeing if i make improvements on the way now i'm recording this on a saturday i'm going to be testing that like in the next week and i will be splicing in a scene somewhere where i'm saying like hey i've been doing this for a week and this is the end result so i've been testing for the last couple of weeks typing uh, and paying more attention to if i'm touch typing and where i'm putting my fingers now i'll never be an ortholinear fan i it just my brain doesn't work that way i might be able to train myself but as i mentioned in my moonlander video that's something that 
takes a lot of time, like more time than I have. And since I work in a business setting, I will get a keyboard that is staggered on my laptop. I'll be in meetings. So I'll be constantly switching between two types of keyboards. Using touch typing definitely improves on that aspect. I started to notice that touch typing seems to be more logical because most fingers only have three buttons. They just go up for one, down for the other, and the middle button. That Those are your three buttons per finger with the only fingers that are doing the heavy lifting are your, your, your pointy fingers. But I highly recommend if you're typing to take some time to take a step back, have a look at how you're typing and figuring out, hey, am I like doing a lot of weird movements with my fingers? And should I fix that? And it is worth the effort, no matter if you have an ortolinear keyboard or a staggered keyboard in both cases, avoiding your fingers moving side to side all the time saves in strain on your fingers. It saves in hours made because it becomes easier and it does cost you some time. And the quickest way, as mentioned earlier, is to go to something like Keyboarder that starts you out with like less keys. I made a new account because I didn't find out how to reset it or I used like a Ctrl Shift N incognito browser so that I have to start fresh with just a couple of keys and I can re-practice over time. Now this whole adventure here started because I got shipped this really nice Vicky board. And if I would have known when I uh, got the email from them, if I wanted to test this, that it was an ortolinear keyboard, I just didn't pay enough attention, then I probably would have said like, you know, don't, like it's not worth it. I don't like typing on ortolinear. I got it and then it was like, I do a review about it. How do I do a review? I have to work with it for a week then at least until I got the idea like, wait, maybe there's something I can make from this. So that's the storyline that you've just seen. But I do want to talk a little bit about like what I got shipped and what I liked about it because it helped me practice the whole orphalinear setup. One of the things that I really like about it, this thing is built like a tank. I got it like delivered and I think they needed like two guys to lift it out of the truck to get it into my home. It is heavy it comes with this huge uh, case which i think is needed because you know how else are you going to get this to the office like it i have to carry this in a separate bag if i put this in my backpack the straps would hold out but uh, joking aside yes it's very firm it feels very solid i love the acrylic it really allows it to light up and it types really nice but then again it has blue switches and i like the clickiness of blue switches that's just me i mostly was thinking that it would be like a sweet ass version just like my uh, fecker alice but that one's like you know staggered and broken and there's like a volume knob in it i like this one it's, it's really good i've been daily driving that one for a while until i got my knock free that said um yeah this was different uh the, the backspace in the middle there's some keys there so on the pro side yeah runs fine has just a, a really solid build and it types really nice now if you're in the market for an orphalinear keyboard i think this is, is really nice if you want like the one of the problems i have with some of the split keyboards is that they're constantly like in different alignments and of course with a fixed keyboard like this you don't have that this is like one spot and then you can learn and i think that helped my ortholinear setup as well because i wasn't constantly tweaking the angle because i think like hey am i typing wrong well the problem was probably my touch typing that part I love about it. Then of course it has Bluetooth and it has like a massive amount of devices. I think I'm used to like three devices connecting. I think this one can do five or six. It was more than I could imagine needing. It's a bit tricky from the controls perspective, but you know, it's nice to have it. Of course, there's a, a wired version. There's a battery in it. It does LEDs even on battery. Most of the times when you have something with like LEDs in it, you don't want them unless it's wired because you know, why would you do the battery drain when you're trying to get usage out of it? I am not looking at my keyboard the whole day. Now my con list is the same ortolinear layout. If you don't want an ortolinear layout, this is not the keyboard for you. I mean, it's nice and looking at it, but do keep in mind that if you go for a keyboard like this, there is some training involved. You won't be able to unpack this if you've never used one of those ortolinear keyboards and just, you know, go to the races. You'll be typing slow for a couple of weeks, months, maybe just a day depends a bit on like how good you are with retraining yourself but just keep that in mind you know you get this thing you probably don't pack it in and just take it to work the first day you definitely need some training time uh, another thing that i didn't like about it is it has a shit ton of layers like i'm used to most of these things having one layer and that is just the fn key and then the rest you can do but i couldn't even find like the page up page down and then later i found that if i hold the space key uh, that brings me to another layer and then I can go to the page up and up, but I had to grab the manual for it. I don't like it when I need to grab the 
manual to get something like this to work but you can get it to work uh, another thing is that i probably would have figured that one out earlier if i had the keyboard configuration tool but the link in the manual was broken they sent me a good link i'll put it in the description for anybody looking for it uh, and then it became a lot clearer and also easier to change it's still trickier than some of the other keyboards i had but at least now you can update the configuration which is always a nice perk of programmable keyboards then i really enjoy being able to swap out usb c cables and this one's really recessed like i'm gonna go hold it to the rest of the key this, this goes deep um that is a problem if you have different types of cables so i have like an l cable on my desk i have to get a different cable out to plug it into this one so yeah to me if you have like a cable at work and you have a cable at home and you just want to be able to replug it yeah you have to make sure that you have straight long usb-c plugs and that they're not too wide it's not as bad as i've seen on some other devices but it's still something to keep in mind and another small thing the backspace key being in the middle here is brilliant and super painful at the same time yes it's much more logical to have it here because you'll be able to easily hit that one when you want to correct something but your mind has to shift because i'm used to it being there that's minor but it is definitely something like you know are you open it and of course you can change that with the configuration tool uh, on my knock fee for example i'm currently because i'm always using the space with my right hand i'm reprogramming the left space to be the backspace key and that way i don't have to think about it too much and the only time that becomes annoying is when i use it for games but i have a game layer on these left on, on these type of keyboards anyway for that now as far as i know i'm not gonna make a habit of making these keyboard videos uh it's nice it, i've been playing with these things but of course like getting one of these shipped means that people want to know hey is the video coming out when is it coming out um and i don't like being forced in a creative box to change that around i made like a different style of video which i really wanted to try with like more walking around vlog style it's not as much but you know i was just experimenting with it and i still wanted to get the video done and today i also have to do a change log video for loxy so far the mini review and then at least i talked a bit in depth about the vicky board for those that would be interested about it i'm probably not going to do any more real keyboard reviews because well you know it's not the type of channel i have i talk about note taking and productivity which is something i enjoy it's the interaction that i have with you guys I expect next one to be the changelog video on logseek and after that i'm going to talk about the future of logseek where i'm going to dive deep into the coding bit if you watch my regular content and you watch this video to the end then thank you so much because you know me flexing and just messing around a bit is one of the great joys i mean this thing doesn't make me a lot of money it's mostly my enjoyment on friday making these videos messing a bit with light and setup remember you're awesome keep it up and see you in the next one